everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. We've packed up our apples, we've packed up our pumpkins, we've packed up our Halloween, and now we are moving into our leaf theme. And there will be some squirrels in here and a little bit of woodland animals, although the woodland animals we'll see more of next week. Mostly our focus is on leaves this week. But before I show you how our classroom is set up, I wanted to kind of let you know where we're at with our children. We are a couple of months into school and just as it happens every year, the honeymoon period is over. And last week we started to see some new behaviors. We started to see more hitting and pushing. We started to have see more sharing issues. We started to see some more just grabbing and some things like taking the rice out of the sensory bin, picking it up and just throwing it. But this is now where we really need to work on being very consistent with how we handle these things. Two months in, our children know that what's in the sensory bin stays in the sensory bin. We have worked on this over and over and over again. Now I'm not talking about the occasional spills that accidentally fall over the edge. That happens. I'm talking about the deliberate, hmm, I'm going to pick up this rice and I'm going to fling it. So what happened was, one child started it and another one and another one within seconds. I mean, my co-teacher and I weren't even, we were like not even far away from it, it happened that fast. Hmm, bummer. We're gonna have to close the sensory bin now because look at all the rice all over the floor. I need some help sweeping this up. So they had, we, they worked a little bit on helping us sweep up. I don't expect them to be able to sweep everything up, but I wanted them to get, understand that when they throw things on the floor, it has to be swept up and then the sensory bin was closed for the rest of the morning. So we're starting to have to do things like that. We've seen some throwing with some toys, like some cars, and it's like, mm, you're gonna have to play somewhere else right now. I can't have you throwing the toys. So we're really being mindful of watching, trying to redirect. If we see it start, we help them re re redirect their behavior so it's more positive and we have to really use this time to observe and see how they're using the classroom. And this is when you think, oh, am I putting too much out already? Or is the classroom, does something need to be tweaked? We're just looking at everything, observing, and it's just maybe simplifying a little bit again. So I just wanna let you know that this happens where everything just starts to be humming along and you're like, hmm. And you might even get a little relaxed thinking, this is getting really easy, and then boom boom, you start having some behavior issues or whatever. So that's where we're at. We're really working on it again and being very consistent. So now let me take you around my room and show you how our classroom is set up for our leaf theme. So over the weekend, we sent home a newsletter to our parents. Actually, my director does, and each teacher puts a little blurb in the newsletter. And so for, for my class, I told the families that if they happen to take a walk this weekend to collect some things that they find on their walk because we're gonna put them on the sensory table. So I did a little collection right now just to give you an idea that we have some twigs and some pine branches, some pine cones, some leaves. These are things that are that we see where we live. And then I also have my printable cards and I will put links to all these printables like I always do in the description. So I have the cards there too, yellow, green, red, brown, so that as they're bringing in their leaves, they might want to sort them by color. And then our science table is kind of, it's very similar to our light table where we're exploring what we find outside. And because they are a choking hazard, I took some things that, that fall from the trees, such as acorns, and I put them in a small, clear plastic container. I found these actually at Michael's, and I like their size because they're a nice size for small hands to hold, and I hot glued the lid closed so they can't open it. This way they can still see it, but I don't have to worry about them putting them in their mouths. And then I also have some, I made these, I got these out of magazines, these fall pictures. Oh my gosh, probably 15 years ago. And I laminated them and I just put them in our theme box and every fall I bring them out just so they kind of can see some different colors of fall as well. 
And then at our writing table, we have our chunky stamps. We have some leaves and acorns, and we have some big stamp pads, and the children can stamp the shapes onto paper. In our dramatic play area, I have brought my Woodland Animal Felt Masks. I purchased these last year on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. Hopefully they're still available. That's the thing you don't know from year to year, but I will look for them, and if they're available, I'll put the link in the description. And I'm gonna tell you that the quality of these masks is wonderful. They have been used a lot, and they're very durable. So we'll have those out, and then I put our felt food out, and I have some wood bowls. Then I did a little scene on top of our shelf with some more, we have some pumpkins and squirrels and an owl, just some more woodland animal things and leaves that are hung on the window. And eventually we'll, we will replace those leaves with leaves that the children have actually painted. Last week in our water table, the children loved scooping um, we had big spiders and the children would scoop the spiders out of the water using those drainers and they would just, you know, scoop them up, they put them on the, tra on the table, then they take them and put them back in the water. So I'm going to do the same thing this week, except rather than spiders, we're going to be using leaves since that's our theme. And this is a great fine motor activity. And also, as I've said before, water is very, very soothing. I use warm water with a little bit of baby bath in it. And so um, our children find it to be very comforting, but it's also working some fun fine motor skills. Last week, we had Duplos on our train table, and this week, it's turned into a Woodland Animal Center. And I had a reader, um, she emailed me and asked me how, if we use our train table with anything other than trains. And I, wanted, I reminded her, and I'll let you guys all know too, that if you go to my videos and look at my classroom setup videos, I pretty much always show you different ways that I use this table other than just train. So feel free to um, browse through my classroom setup video so you can see the different ways that I use it. This table actually has two sides. This is the flat side and then the other side has the bricks, um, the plates glued to it so that the Duplos can stick to it. So we just flip it over depending on how we're going to use it. So we have our tree blocks and we have our cute little um, animals that are in there, the little calico critters, and so they can play with those in the block area. And in our reading area, we've added our puppet theater and some puppets. On our easel, we are going to be painting leaves using watercolors. And I have, um, this is part of a printable that I have, I'll put the link in the description, and then we'll just have different color, wa different colored watercolors for them to use. In our sensory bin, we have some leaves, we have some chenille stems, and we have some dyed pasta, and we dyed them some autumn colors that kind of go with the leaves. And what's fun about this activity is that the children can use the chenille stems to push through, they're gonna push through the pasta. It's the perfect size for it, so it ends up being a fun fine motor activity as well. A couple of our table activities, we have a, a, an acorn threading activity, and I got this off of Amazon, and I'll drop a link in the description. And we also have these fall shapes. This we actually got through Scholastic, and they can do the um, lacing, the threading, with the scarecrow and the acorn. One of our printable activities is matching two halves of a leaf to make a whole leaf. And for our younger children, I make two copies. One I keep intact, and then the other one I cut. So then they can kind of use this, it kind of helps them so they can see, and they can match it up like that. And then, once they get used to that, we remove the whole sheet, so they're just simply taking the cards, they're matching them together so they make whole leaves. Another printable activity, and this one is actually more suited for um, younger children. It's very simple. It's just doing matching the colors of the leaves. So again, I take one copy, I keep it intact, and then I take another copy and I cut it. So then they can just simply place the matching color on top. And again, all of these printables, I have the links in the description for you. 
Another printable activity I have, this one has the numbers on it as well as that many leaves on each card. So they're not only counting, but they can also be doing some number recognition. So I just take the matching card and I put it on top, or you can use the cards by themselves for a small group counting activity. One of our art activities is going to be mixing colors on leaves. And there's two ways that you can do this. The first one is putting the leaf into a bag and then squirting a couple of different colored paint inside the bag, sealing it again. And then the children can either use their fingers or they can use a roller to move the colors around. Or you can do a finger painting activity. For your children who like to touch paint, you can just do a couple of little tiny squirts of a few different colors and then invite them to use their fingers to mix the colors around on top of the leaf. And again, this printable is, it's the same one that I used at the easel and I have a link to it in the description. Another fun art activity that we do every year is dropping watercolors onto leaf shaped paper. And I'll put a link to the blog post where it shows how we do this activity. But basically they, you get liquid watercolors and they squeeze the watercolors using the dropper and release it onto the leaf covering it with different colors of fall. And then we let it dry and we will probably hang these in our classroom tree. In our Play-Doh area, we are going to have leaf shaped cookie cutters and we have rolling pins. And another thing you can do with leaf shaped cookie cutters is you can dip them into paint and press them onto paper. So we will probably be doing that with them as well. And then one of our circle time activities is going to be sorting leaves. So I'm going to give each child a leaf and then I will have these cards on the floor and then we'll say who has a red leaf and they, the children with the red leaves will put them on the red leaf paper. And same with green and brown and yellow. And you can use pretend leaves or you can use real leaves that you've just found on a nature walk. So that's how we have our classroom set up for our leaf theme. We've added some woodland animal activities, but we'll be bringing more of those out next week. And remember, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel and make sure to click on the bell icon so you can get notified each time I publish a new video. Thanks for watching.